Ah, group of enemies. Let's get them with an AoE. Nice. Let's get away. Shield. Okay. Get away. I'm damaged. Let's get some healing light. Ooh, nice. So, do you want an ability system like this in your Unreal Engine project? It can, and I will show you how. Because we do have this tool available on the marketplace. And currently you can make abilities like uh, these one, passive abilities, but also just the normal abilities you will have this UI, and you can assign it to different sets and things like that. It's amazing. Let me show you how. And I think I want to discuss three things with you. First, how these abilities are set up. Second, how to make your own ability. And uh, third, how to set this up in your own project. Let's first start with how the abilities are set up. These abilities right here, what you see, are data table driven. So basically we have a DT uh, abilities. And we have three of these. We have active abilities, buffs, and passive abilities. The active abilities are the ones that you will see the most. And these are things like Fireball, Thunder Strike, Healing Light, Blink. Let me show you just a quick, uh, couple of quick examples. This one is called for us Shadow Step. And this is what we call a custom ability. And a custom ability that is being set up like this. We have a data table. In the data table, we have different categories of a structure. And we have generic attributes, targeting, equipping, cooldown, casting, etc. In the generic attributes, here we are showing, hey, which ability do we activate when we use this ability? In this example, we use the ability component, uh, ability blueprint, shadow step. So we have this one. And this basically has a, a structure uh, currently what you see this one is a child of the ability base, the active ability base. And the active ability base is a child of the ability base. And the ability base is a child of the ability abstract. Currently the ability base itself, that one is just defining generic abilities like casting something, uh, showing an animation, spawning effects, things like that. Like I think 99% of all the abilities can be generated with this specific class. However, you could make a child of this and add extra functionalities like custom timers, um, uh, custom uh, uh, logic on begin play, things like that. But that is advanced. Let me check the more basic ones, like a fireball. A fireball currently is using ability projectile rotate to camera. That is a specific child that we made. And currently what we do have right here, specifically the casting attributes are interesting. Because this one is use casting. And what does it mean? Uh, currently we have different casting types and this one is a chargeable. That means if you hold down the button, it can charge instead of an auto release. An auto release is like an instant one. And the continuous, that's more for like beams and things like that. That's charging it in a continuous way. We can assign ability costs like mana, things like that, or any other attribute that you would like. Specifically, if you have a chargeable cast type, uh, then you would like to make use of different cast stages. You want to have a start, and this one uses an animation montage, which is starting the ability on this specific uh, animation montage. We have specific notifiers that we use to attach the particle effect, uh, oh, here spawn the Niagara effect, and spawn a sound. If we go to the second stage, that is looping. And specifically, if for charging, that is like a looping animation as long as you hold it. In this example, it's an animation like this. After that, we have a release. So that is the actual release of the ability. We can also open that one. And here we have a notify uh, to apply an effect and a notify to finish the ability. And optionally, we could have a cons uh, cancel cast. 
So if we don't fire it, but just want to return to the normal stage, then we can also have a own animation for that. So based on these four casting stages and the casting type, you could make so many abilities. It's insane. Um, also, if we fire something, then we want it to have an impact. So the impact, we have all kinds of settings and obviously the Niagara effects, impact sounds, uh, AOA uh, impact attributes for if we want to have an area of effect uh, damage or any other effect that you would like. Projectile attributes for when a projectile is currently in progress, then you probably also want to have a Niagara effect. And if you use a line trace based casting, yes or no, what kind of range do you want it to have? The beam in this example, we don't use a beam. However, we do use that for this one, the thunder beam. And this one is a beam. It has a beam particle effect and a beam sound. So like this, we can generate a lot of different abilities. And in this example map, we try to make sure that you can see every different type. So this one was a custom. This is simply a projectile that was loading the, loading the effects. Nice. So that one is a projectile one. Pulse. Like that. We also have examples where you require equipment. So in this case, we call it precision shot. Currently, when I click on activating the ability, it won't work because this one requires a specific bow. And now we could have it like that. This one is the beam. So that is a continuous one. And obviously area of effects. And the most interesting one for me is the meteor shower. And these things are not only for damage, it's also for other attributes like healing. So let's say we have two allies here, let's damage them with this pad. And they have a healing light. So everyone around me is currently healing. As you can see, oh, that one was not in my radius. Now it's healing over time. Oh, and my cooldown. Yeah, perfect. Besides active abilities, we also have buffs. And these buffs like this one, currently you see in the top of the screen, you see an icon. We can also see it in our screen right here. And we see, okay, what is the effect? And besides active abilities, we also have passive abilities. Things like, uh, let's say, extra health. So in this example, we increased our health by 200 points. If we look at our passive abilities, we have three slots. Currently, we set this one in our slot. But if I remove it, our maximum health is again 100. But if I add it, oh, this is the wrong one. It's set to 300. And things like that are amazing. Um, and these are set in our data table, passive abilities. And also here, we have uh, several uh, settings, which you can scroll, uh, scroll through. But in this case, way less because the active abilities really need a lot of information to be able to execute. We also have the ability to learn things. Currently, we made an example of this specific path and we can see, okay, in our ability manager, we are calling an um, event a learn ability. And we can just provide a tag because our ability system is tag based. Let's say ability active and you can just click on any ability that you would like if you have implemented it and make sure that it's working and by that you can make sure to have all the abilities pop up in your screen yes or no so how to make your own ability let's make an active ability ourselves and in this example i think what i would like to do is i would like to make a new one uh, instead of a fireball Let's try to make it a different color and call it ice or something like that. Let's first test out this fireball. So that's the existing one. Let's make a new one. So we go to our active abilities. And in this case, let's just use our fireball as a template. Duplicate this one. And let's call it ice ball. Ice ball. Every ability needs an identifier. So our current ability has the active fireball. However, if we want to make a new one, let's go to manage gameplay tags, 
click on plus, make sure to select our ability manager.ini so we know which tags uh, are uh, in the correct file. It doesn't, it's not required, but it's more easy to do. And let's type in ability.active.iceball and add a new tag. So now we just created our new active ability and we can use that one here, ice ball. So now we made a unique identifier for our ability. And let's use an icon. Uh, I'm going to just use this icon as an example for now. And let's name this one ice ball. We could add a preview video of how it's used that will show up in our main menu. Uh, I will show you. For the arcane pulse, I just made an example like this. So you could make beautiful videos like this. Let's categorize this as an offensive uh, ability because it's for damaging. Uh, we need only affect enemies for this one. Uh, attached to the right socket, uh, things like that is okay. Let's make sure it's only cost 10 mana. And if we want, we could also make sure, uh, let's uh, make sure this is costing health too, because it drains down your, uh, your own uh, health. Oh, so we need to create a new one. Gameplay tag, mana. And we consume five mana and five health every time we are going to use this ability. I want to use the same animations and the same notifies as um, as for the fireball, which I think I like. But now for the explosion, uh, let's make sure to select another particle effect. And I think I have one that is called Ice Bolt Explosion, sure. And for the projectile, I want to have the normal Ice Bolt. Let's save it. Go to our map. And instead of this one being a fireball, let's make it an ice ball that we created. Let's rename this. And now let's pick this one up. It's automatically set to the slot one. Otherwise we could just select it manually from here, like drag and drop it. And let's test it out. Nice. So. This works perfectly. Oh, and you see our health is decreasing because we set it like that. Nice. So that's how you can set up your own abilities. Feel free to play around with this. Please make a good look at how these abilities are currently set up in the data table. Check around in the map and try to play around with it. It's a really, really powerful system and I think you're really going to like this. And at last, how to set this up in your own project? Well, when you get our example uh, map system, please check out the game mode. Um, oh, first of all, by the way, it's good to know uh, this system requires a couple of plugins. You will get this one as a whole project because it requires plugins, a couple of project settings, and we can't do that in an add to project. Um, the plugins for the uh, UI, we use common UI. It's a very powerful tool. So uh, 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 try to enjoy that. It also makes it very easy to make sure it works with gamepad, things like that. And we also use some Niagara systems, uh, particle effects and things like that. And for our advanced, more advanced locomotion system, we use animation uh, library. Um, the project settings, we use interaction traces. Uh, we use uh, the gameplay tags and some collision uh, traces. So please check that out. These are all in the config settings. And when you have that done, check out the world settings, the game out, and you can check out what everything that's assigned. We have a player controller, and that's the most important one. On the player controller, we have assigned the ability manager for the player itself. And here we have some important settings like learn all active abilities by default, so you can just test it out. Otherwise, you can just turn this one off and uh, learn abilities on the way. Maybe via tech tree that we also provide in a separate module or however you would like to do that. This component also uh, initializes the, uh, the HUD. So this one creates the UI in the lower right corner. However, this HUD that you see right here, 
That one is created by this specific HUD class, the HUD Auto Create. Uh, another one is in the game state. We use a tag mapper for abilities. And what does this do? Well, we set up all kinds of uh, ability mappings and the tags and things like that. And we only want to do that once to link, hey, which ability is linked to which tag. So on the game state, we only do this once for all players and to make sure it's accessible. Um, if you want to use items uh, from our systems, then uh, you also need to have a tag mapper of the items. Now let's talk about the other requirements for the system. An ability system is one of the most intertwined systems that you could have because you need basically everything if you want to have a complete project. You want to have attributes because you want to make sure to add mana, add health, things like that. You want to apply damage. You want to play animations. You want to make sure it's replicated. You want to have a UI. You probably want to have linked inventory items like the bow. Um, you want to be able to execute actions on equipment. You want to interact with things in the world. You want to have an enemy uh, that you want to uh, identify via gameplay tag, etc. This system works perfectly well with all of our other systems. However, if you want this in your own system, you can. It's very possible. I don't recommend it for beginners, but I do recommend it for intermediate to advanced users. Let's give an example. So I just opened up the Ability Manager Advanced. And what I did is I am checking, okay, uh, what are the references to an Attribute Manager? And obviously I have made references to an Attribute Manager, but the thing is I don't make hard references. These reference are abstract classes, which are basically an interface. So what does it mean? Let's say you have your own attribute manager. That means that you can just delete the attribute manager from this project. However, you can just take a look at all the errors that will arise because this one will give errors and things like that. Um, but that means that you need to implement your own uh, attribute manager at these places where the errors arise or choose to say, okay, I don't want to have that attribute logic and then you can just skip that whole function. In this example, I'm getting an attribute manager. And if I um, uh, get it, I want to check, hey, do we have uh, the requirements that we want to meet for this specific uh, ability uh, manager? And these ability costs, as you saw, these are attributes and these attributes are assigned very generically only with a gameplay tag and a specific attribute. That means that you could map this to your own attribute manager if you really want to. Um, um, and you just need to make sure to consume a certain amount. In this example, I'm using my attribute manager to say, hey, uh, I use this function. But if you have your own, I assume you have a similar function like this. And otherwise, just create it. So again, not for beginners, but for intermediate to advanced users that don't want to use the other systems. That doesn't mean that the system is not able to be used as a, 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 on its own. However, just see all these references to inventory, uh, attribute manager, replication, uh, animations, things like that. Just as an example, of how can I implement this myself if I would have my own system like that? So feel free to do that. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. I really love this system. We are really proud of it and I hope you enjoy it too. And I hope you have a really nice day. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.